Hey guys, doing a video here on total tank maintenance. In this video, I'm gonna go through every single thing I do to maintain my tank and the frequency in which I do it. Uh, there's gonna be a few things in here that, that's gonna seem like a no brainer, like scraping the glass, but I'm gonna go through why I do that um, and what benefit it, it gives me. So hang with me here. Uh, we're gonna run through everything I do um, totally to keep the tank maintained and operating uh, in peak condition. All right, so we're gonna start off with the things that I do two times a week. Uh, so the first thing I do two times a week is I scrape the inside of the glass. Um, this one seems like a no brainer uh, I use the a, a mag float as well as a manual scraper to scrape the inside of the glass. Um, this does a couple things. One, it removes algae and helps with viewing. But uh, the big thing is it removes algae. And we don't want to give algae a place to start. Uh, removing it from when it starts to grow and not allowing it to get a stronghold um, and have a place to continue to grow from um, is, of course, a huge benefit to the tank. So making sure that we keep our glass clean on the inside and not allow algae to have a place to start is definitely a benefit. Also, you'll notice here, uh, when you're looking at the seals of my tank, Notice those seals still look brand new. I never scrape my seals. If you are scraping your tank and destroying your seals, you are causing issues. Scrape up to the seal, do not scrape the seal. You don't wanna create any issues or leaks with your tank. The other thing I do twice a week is I wipe down the outside of the tank. Again, it seems like a no brainer. I just get a towel and wipe down the outside. But a couple things. One, uh, of course, viewing. It improves viewing. Um, but one of the biggest things is it helps you see if there's a problem. So if you wipe down the outside of your tank and you continually get that salt creep at the bottom, that tells you you have a potential leak issue. So it does help keep an idea on what's going on. And then of course, uh, cleaning the skimmer cup. So we dump it regularly. Um, there's no reason to put it back dirty. So I do a comprehensive clean. Um, as you can see, it, it's very dirty and that's just a few days build up. So I, uh, I take a paper towel and I clean out between the cup, out between the ring of the cup and the inside cone. As you can see there, I just kind of shove the paper towel down in there um, and rub it around. I know it comes with a tool to do these things. I don't use the tool. Um, I just use paper towels, of course, however you want to get it clean. Uh, as long as it's clean, you're, you're doing a good job. So I clean it that way and then I take the paper towel and I shove it down uh, through the cone and I clean the inside of the cone. Um, as you can see what I'm doing here, uh, I'm, I've shoved it down the cone and then I'll stick my finger in there and just um, rub the paper towel around and, and clean out the inside of that cone. So you can see there, uh, it's the outside of the glass is already looking really clean. And as I'm cleaning the inside of the cone, it is getting very clean there as well. So you can see there, uh, all the way clean, you can see straight through it. So I'll also turn it around and uh, do the same thing um, from the other side. I'll, I'll put the paper towel in um, and I will clean the inside of the cone from the other side. And then I'll also take the paper towel and that bottom ring there that gets built up. It's, you know, it's the bottom ring of the skimmer there. We got to clean off that bottom, bottom ring and make sure that there is no buildup anywhere on this cup. And then of course, don't forget about the cap. 
Um, I'll pick up the cap and I will take the paper towel and I will shove it down in there um, and I will clean out the cap as well. Um, just a note, these are dry paper towels that I'm using. They're not wet with tank water or anything. This is all dry paper towel. Um, put it down in the cup, scrape it and clean it out. Um, clean out all the crevices and, and rings of that cup and then um, you have a nice clean top of the of the skimmer cup so then everything's put back together and you know it looks essentially brand new uh perfectly clean and that's what you want there's no reason to run dirty equipment you want your equipment looking like it's brand new um, even if it's years old so looking at what i do every two weeks so uh cleaning the screen on my light uh, these are the ai prime 16 hd lights i clean uh, that top filter there or that top screen there um, obviously i would use two hands and i would run the vacuum at the same time i'm rubbing my finger across the top there but uh, obviously can't do that for the video i'm holding the camera with the other hand so uh, basically i just rub my finger there uh, to peel off all the dust and um take uh, the home vacuum and uh, suction up all that dust to get it off the light. Uh, make sure I keep good airflow to the light. Not only um, does that help maintain the life of the light, it helps keep the light cool because if that screen is clogged, there's less airflow cooling down your light. Um, and of course, a hot light will uh, melt lenses and things like that. And then of course I do a 10% water change every two weeks. Um, 45 gallon tank, I do about four gallons every two weeks and then that's just water in, water out. So looking at some of the things I do every four weeks. So the first thing to note here is I do use a turkey baster and clean all my rockscape. I take that turkey baster and I just move water around the rockscape, uh, get into all the crevices. You can see all the debris floating in the wa water there. I do this every four weeks and there's still sediment and debris that settles on the rock. Um, even with all the good flow I have in the tank, there it still settles down in the crevices of the rock. So I use turkey baster every four weeks to keep the rock work completely clean. I you know, just spray down all the rocks, all the outside of it, all the crevices, and get all the debris up and out. Of course, uh, we're gonna do this before we do our filter clean. Um, that way we make sure that any debris that's knocked loose, knocked loose and goes into the filter gets cleaned out. The other thing I do is I do stir my sand bed. Now, if you are not somebody that typically does this and your tank's been up a while, please don't go do this. You will cause more damage in your tank than you will help. Um, I personally do this from day one, setting up the tank. Um, part of it's uh, for aesthetic because I don't like that brown buildup that happens between the sand and the glass. Uh, the other part of it is to make sure I keep my sand well aerated um, and make sure it stays very clean. I don't want the sand to hold any detritus or anything like that. So you saw me mixing it with kind of my glass scraper there, just scraping up against the glass, moving the sand around and getting everything um, cleaned up. Uh, another thing that I do is use the siphon here and, uh, you know, suction up the uh, dust that comes off as I uh, drain water from the tank for my water change. Um, I also don't do this, don't do every section of the tank every four weeks. I do the tank in two different sections. So essentially each section is done every eight weeks. And then filter maintenance. I have two whole other videos on this. Um, one is around setting up your filter, what should be in there, um, what I have it in there for, what it does. 
and the other one is around um, an actual water change and an actual filter cleaning and show step by step what I do. So I just have a few highlights here for this video. As you can see, this tank, uh, this filter is an older filter, but it looks brand new. And that is because I scrub everything every four weeks. It gets scrubbed with a toothbrush every four weeks, all surfaces, even the inside walls of the canister itself. Each basket itself gets scrubbed with a toothbrush and it is just scrubbed perfectly clean every four weeks. I do not let anything build. Any of that little um, hard white stuff that gets on there, I scrape those off with my fingernail. And then here's just some of the chemicals uh, I put in there, some of the uh, stuff I put to help treat the water. Chemi Pure Elite, Roa Foss. Um, I also put in Purigen. And, um, and then for mechanical media, um, I have ceramic media. I have carbon here. Um, and then the ceramic media, and then um, the filter pads themselves, of course, a uh, fine pad and a coarse pad. So also every four weeks, I do clean my power head. I uh, shut it off and you can see here, you can see the inside ring, all those outside propellers are just filthy in the back. Um, you can't even see the blue propeller. They're just coated in yuck and algae. So I get out my cleaning tools and uh, every four weeks this gets cleaned down. So what I do is I take a, a little, little bucket of water and I, I put it in that little bucket of water with my, and I use my toothbrush and some of my frag tools actually to uh, clean at it. So what we're going to see, you can see the close up there, all the debris on that propeller. Um, it just, it's should look shiny and blue and it just doesn't. You can see all that yuck build up on there. So, um, here's the frag tools and stuff that I use. Uh, I don't use obviously the, the, the bone cutters or anything. I just use some of those finer tools to get in there and help scrape some of that stuff off. Uh, I put it in the little container here with water and I take a toothbrush to it. Um, clean all surface areas with that toothbrush, um, outside, front, back, and, and pay particular attention to the propellers because the propellers are what uh, is really, uh, really a uh, holding a lot of that yuck so you can see there the propellers are now blue um, i scraped it off with some of those frag tools as well as with the toothbrush and uh, you can see the propellers are are now blue and everything's nice and cleaned up so um, there's another close-up of it uh, with with it all nice and cleaned up So another picture here and just uh, a couple more shots so you can see fully how um, I've cleaned it up and um, really kind of what it looked like before and what it looked like looks like now is pretty pretty drastic of a difference. You couldn't see all that blue on the propellers in it, uh, at the start and now you can see all the blue on those propellers. Not only does that help remove uh, buildup and detritus from the tank, but it keeps your equipment in prime operating condition. Clean equipment operates well. So then we got skimmer cleaning every four weeks. So here's my skimmer. I put it in a bucket with some water and I break it down to every individual piece every four weeks. And each piece gets cleaned with frag tools and a toothbrush. So you can see just the housing here, you can see that algae build up on it um, and that's all got to come off that's all got to be scraped out and removed and that skimmer's got to look brand new when I put it back together uh, the little inside housing again that one gets built up a lot quicker 
but we got to clean everything out and get it get it looking brand new. None of that buildup can stay. Um, that buildup does not help the equipment run at top performance. Pulling it apart and just kind of looking inside the pump there, you can see all the buildup inside the pump. Um, that's not what we want. We want this thing to be clean and looking brand new. So we're gonna get in there and scrub all that stuff out. Also, um, the housing around this pump, um, of course, you know, I took that apart and you can see here just kind of down in those corners, um, it's starting to show a little bit of signs of buildup. So we're gonna go ahead and clean that out as well. Don't forget the internal filter here. You can see the buildup on that. That's, that restricts flow. And the external filter here, of course, we're gonna clean that filter as well. So here's my cleaning tools. Um, we're gonna get in there with a toothbrush and we're really gonna scrub down that housing and make sure we get it nice and clean. Um, we're also gonna get inside all those ports, make sure the inside of those ports and you can see kind of using the frag tools to push the paper towels in there and really get the inside of those ports cleaned. Uh, so you can see here, um, you saw there that the, uh, the inside of the ports there are clean and that pump housing looked really clean. Um, again, everything's got to be cleaned out 100%. You can see it here, a couple still pictures. Everything in there has been um, cleaned with a toothbrush and it's looking essentially brand new. The inside of the tube here has been cleaned out as well. That tube is clear, um, in great, almost new condition. Um, none of that uh, old brown yuck is left. Again, we want everything looking brand new. Clean equipment works the best. Dirty equipment is subpar. Of course, the skimmer cup was cleaned as well in that bucket of water. Um, this is where it really gets that good cleaning once a month and not just wiped out with a paper towel. We're going to get in there. We're going to use our tools and we're going to scrub this thing out and make sure it looks brand new. And of course, this skimmer is not brand new, but uh, it looks to be in great condition. And that's because I clean it every four weeks and make sure that it is scrubbed down to a new condition. If you look at the inside of the bucket here, all that debris was just from scrubbing out the skimmer. So it left a lot of dirt behind and this is a piece of equipment that I have in my tank to clean the tank and it's leaving that type of debris behind when I clean it. So we also wanna wipe down the salt creep. We don't wanna let that salt creep build and damage anything in our tank or make it look dirty or messy. So I get a little bit of tank water on a paper towel Yes, I use a lot of paper towels when I clean my tank. And we just wipe down every last surface of the tank and make sure that the tank itself looks brand new. Salt creep is bad for your equipment. It's bad for the plastic. Um, it will get onto your walls if you let it get out of control and it's just not a good thing. So you can see here, I wipe everything down. Even my brackets holding my lights, even in the corners and the nooks and crannies of that top of the tank, everything has been wiped out. Uh, that's uh, super glue there on the center brace, but everything has been wiped out and it looks brand new like nothing. Uh, there's no salt creep there and nothing is building up. That is of course, what you want uh, so hopefully you've enjoyed this video hopefully you've got some tips and tricks to help yourself um, if you like the content give me a like give me a subscribe check out a ton more of my videos i appreciate your time y'all have a great day thank you